out yourself, sort out yourself, them coming for you. Sort out yourself, sort out yourself, them coming for you and you. Sort out yourself, sort out yourself, them coming for you. When you and a lady band together and you and have a overstanding, you know, really mean that you have to go buy her a ring to show her your wife. You know, for you have a, have a divine connection with you and she and God, that are part of the first marriage. And then if you see the value of her and feel like they can finance her something valuable for sure, so she have that value, you can get her a ring. And we'll now hear the responses from our panelists. Do you agree with what you heard earlier? I am not sure I agree with the divine connection with that man and woman and God because marriage is ordained by God. Um, while I do acknowledge that there are persons who live together and do not take on the commitment of marriage and that's their choice, um, I believe that women need to step up the place decide what they want for themselves. As a female, we need to determine how we want to live our life, how we view ourselves, how we see ourselves, you know, for those especially who believe in a divine or connected to a divine, how we see ourselves in the eyes of that divine, right? Because we don't want to take it for granted that everybody believe in God and will follow the Christian principles in terms of marriage, but we do have women who actually want to be married, but because a number of the men are not into marriage, they will just settle for that kind of relationship. For me, I am a firm believer in the manual, right? Every electronic device we have today, the first thing we see coming out of it is a manual. But what most of us do with the manual, we throw it aside and try to work the device without the manual. I believe in the Bible. And the word of the Lord speaks about coming together in a union that is sanctioned, first of all, by God. Yes, that, that divine connection. But then it should be solemnized. You know, it should be legalized mm -hmm. through the context of marriage. And I will concur with Miss um, Garwood here that speaks to the fact that ladies tend to want to have that level of security? Um, well, I would say for the, for the younger folks, right, to be honest, um, in, terms of, in terms of the overall thing, it's, it's kind of two, two side. Where the, the men, I can let me speak for the men part first, where we tend to, to shy away from marriage in terms of because we're not yet stable to actually take on the actual role itself to the full extent, to the full extent to say, well, you know what, I'm going to get myself a wife and I can properly you know, financially secure for her, right? Um, for the woman, yes, she wants, the, she wants the, the level of security and everything that it, that it brings, but then at the same time, it still have a little legal issue where that is concerned because I'm like, well, you know, you're taking me for a fool or, you know, I'm going to take half your stuff. Okay. Um, we've largely spent a lot of time dealing with the women's perspective to tying the knot. Mm. But what about the men? What are some of the approaches or ideas that men have when it comes on to commitment? Ooh. <laughs> I recognize you always seem to want to ask me the questions first. <laughs> Is it well, because I'm closer to you? <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, while, while Adermi was speaking, a thought came back to me mm -hmm. again about the manual. If we look in the book of Genesis, God gave man three doublers in the garden. The first thing he gave him was work. Mm -hmm. You know, he says, no, tend the garden, keep the garden. And the second thing he gave him, will. It says you can eat from all the trees in the garden except this one. So it's a matter now. I have the will to choose. And the third thing he gave man was what? A woman. Right? So the last thing man got was a woman. But the first thing men want today is a woman. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, too many of us as men don't know who we are, don't understand our, our position, our purpose. And we want to get a woman. And that woman is supposed to come alongside us to be our help that is fit for us. Now, if I just throw this in there, I know I'm, I'm, I'm segueing a bit, but if you can just throw this in there to look at the fact that 
a banker marries to the help meet of a farmer. You know, that's unequally yoke. And I want to say that as men, we have been marginalized. I was talking to Adermi earlier. Oh, we grew up somewhat confused because your mother is beating you and she's asking you why you're crying. And she said to you, name your all kind of stuff, you know, you're a girl, you're that, you're that, you're that. And then another time she's beating you and you're not crying. And then she says, oh, what? You turn money in your spa me? A money I turn for me? Mm. So he becomes confused. And then also, we are given guns and toy cars at Christmas to go out of the house and play. But then now that we are men, we are expected to be domesticated. What's my role? Why am I in this house? Am I just to give her good sex, you know, and to have woolly picnic, as we say? No. Mm -hmm. We are leaders. We must be guiding the family in the manner and in the way the author of the book and of the marriage mm. says it ought to be done. What makes a good husband material? I think what makes a good husband is rather someone who understands their own feelings and knows how to communicate. Does waiting to have sex before marriage help to sustain the marriage long term? And is it different from men, from women? I believe so. I believe when you preserve yourself for marriage, it will help you better when you get married. But that is also a requirement given by the good book that the Reverend spoke about and I endorse. One of the things, and I remember a couple of years ago um, lecturing developmental psychology, I was speaking about in my time, when I was young and dating, Oh, you would take the person to your family and your family meet the person and oh, the person can just come to your gate or maybe can sit down on the veranda. But in this, you, you, you held hand, you never kiss the person until eight months after you thought of the person. They can kiss your cheek, they may go to your lip. And I remember my students in that class, Miss, where you come from? It's a different time now. No, it's different. Because we do not place, and that's my opinion, value on who we are. We just freely give away. And both men and women do that themselves. You know, we don't get to know the person, right? And so there is no boundaries established for the relationship. And so persons or not, you need to preserve yourself, get to know each other, become good friends. By the time a young girl meets a boy at 5 p.m., 7 p.m., they are walking into an Airbnb or a motel or somewhere there. And they are, they are knowing each other intimately without knowing the person mentally, without knowing the person from a physical perspective. Does this person have any STIs? Do, mm. what, what, what is going on with this person? And because of that, then the marriages and the relationship don't work. Because when you actually engage in the act of sex, and it's not like how oh, Danielle Steele wrote it in her book, <laughs> you know, the, the love, the thing, and it's not like what you see on Young and the Restless, or Days of Our Lives, or those soap operas, when you realize that this is a different kind of thing, you know, it's a real thing that I'm into, then more often than that, the relationship fails. But when you get to know each other, become each other friend and learn and understand each other, when you reach the part of intimacy, it will be much better for both persons in the relationship. Mm. If I may, you know, sorry to, to, to bother you, but you just dated yourself a while ago when you talk about the young and the restless. Those shows <laughs> stopped showing how long ago. Oh, thank you very much, David. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sex is more than a physical act. Right. It's emotional. It's also spiritual. Right. I really want to thank you guys for all that you have shared. Any last remarks? Well, for me, thanks for having me <laughs> today, you know, and... I, I endorse what you're doing here because this is very important that we impart this kind of knowledge to the wider community. There has to be the educating, there has to be the reculturing. So thanks for having me. As, as I started off, I say this, this program is ripe. It is ripe for the time and the season. And I look forward to sharing in on the topics 
as the program continues. Thanks for having me today. Okay. And I just want to say to the, to the younger folks out there, just be, protection is always good. If you, if, if you are going to be having sex or anything of that sort, protect yourself. Well, this is the end of our He Says, She Says conversation. Stay tuned for more. Our guests were Reverend David Grant, Ms. Geraldine Garwood, and Adermi Mitchell. Thank you for watching, and I am Andre Palmer. Take care. Sort out yourself, sort out yourself, them coming for you. Sort out yourself, sort out yourself, them coming for you and you. Sort out yourself, sort out yourself.